Welcome back to Berkshire Guitar Amplifiers. Uh, Stuart Smith here and I thought I'd show you this amazing Fender Vibro King. I've never had one of these in the uh, workshop before and uh, have a look at the finish on this. It's a kind of burnished, I don't know what you'd call that really, but that's uh, pretty cool isn't it? in lovely condition and then as we go along the front of it it's quite an unusual amplifier you have these these controls here I found out that these pretty much do the reverb uh, it's got volume treble bass and mid and then these two do the um, vibrato so you've got reverb vibrato and a standard tone control and a fat switch which gives a little little bit of sort of overdrive. The problem on this one is apparently it makes a, a loud roaring noise after about 10-15 minutes on and um, he's changed all the valves so it's not going to be a valve issue. So I don't think we'll mess about. Let's power it up and uh, see if we can hear this noise that he's concerned about. Okay let's power this up. Um power switch on the back. This is a 115 volt amp so I've put it through a uh, step down transformer. I'll take it out of standby. Ooh. Oh well, forget the 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, there it is immediately. Uh, very, very obvious, loud, roaring noise. I'm just going to tap the valve to see it's changed the valve so I just want to tap them to make sure it's not that. Tapping each valve. If it's the valve that normally makes it come and go, it isn't the valve. Right, so uh, it's nothing to do with reverb, because I've got this turned all the way down. But that volume control does nothing, so it's a little bit later in the amp than the first stage. Totally, in fact. Oh no, no, there's a bit of mid. If you turn the mid up, I can hear it. Not very much. Bass. Oh yes, it's there, a roaring array on the bass too. So, right, so it's um, pre or in. It's either pre these treble. It's either pre this um, EQ or it's in the EQ section because this is affecting it. If it was after this section, these would have no effect at all. Right, so we're looking at one of the preamp valves, um, maybe one of, the, one of the resistors in the anode has gone noisy, that would be my guess. But anyway, we're going to have to take the, uh, the chassis out. Right, well let's take the chassis out and uh, see if it will perform for us up on the bench. Right, the chassis was a right little pig to get out. It took me the best part of 45 minutes to get it out. It was just jammed in there. Uh, so here we are top side, all looks very clean. 1994 to 2003 approximately these were made. I don't know how old this particular one is. I'll take the, uh, the doghouse lid off and we'll have a look inside but I don't expect to see any horror stories in there. A um, couple of 6v6s doing the allegedly 60 watts, uh, probably wouldn't get 60 watts out of this, 40 or 50 maybe, and a slew of tubes. Oh, that's a 6v6 there. Oh, uh, probably a uh, reverb drive or something, not quite sure, haven't got the schematic for this at the moment. So a bit of preamp, maybe a reverb drive and recovery, and uh, or drive and recovery and then a phase splitter, tone control, that sort of thing. So my, I think the problem will be around here somewhere would be my guess. Right, let's take the doghouse lid off and have a quick look just to reassure ourselves that the main HT smoothing caps are not leaking. Here we are in the HT smoothing cap section. 
and uh, I can see it immediately that these are the original caps and they're held down by the silicon rubber and they're not my favorite caps these I'm afraid I don't like IC caps at all they're quite cheap and nasty and uh, there's no sign of them leaking though can't see anything it's this end you'll always see leaking this black end and not the silver end so let's just have a little look over the back here and they're mostly silver ends here of course there's a black one there and a black one there it's a bit weird the way that's soldered onto this Ooh, a bit strange I don't you think it's a bit odd that bus bar running diagonally across there Whew. interesting it's certainly a real solid connection someone's made there with huge great big thick cables well, maybe someone has been in here in the past um, not sure okay someone's thoughtfully labeled up red and black on the uh, reverb to remind you which way to put the reverb in um, on the back the usual sort of thing really well let's tip it upside down and see what it looks like underneath and here we are on the underside all very neat and clean looks almost factory new this I don't think this has been used very much at all this amp so nice point to point wiring uh, there's the tremolo cell which is a photo cell and um, a neon lamp wrapped in some black heat shrink to keep the light out uh, this is probably the biased side over here not totally sure probably the biased pot there um, so I'm not really suspecting HT and I'm not really suspecting output valves and screen resistors and things just because I think this problem is earlier on in the amp I think it's kind of here somewhere you know around about the this preamp section here so my strategy will be to power it up again and make sure we still hear the horrible noise and then to uh, I think I'm going to spray some of these resistors with freezer see if we get lucky my money is on a noisy anode resistor like this 100k there or something like that I have had those go before so we'll give that a go with some freezer there's another 100k there and uh, see if we get lucky <laughs> we should be so lucky right okay so we've got the chassis up on the bench and I'm going to turn it on and see if we can get the noise again oh, that's not on uh, that's not plugged into the step down transformer so the amp is up on the bench I've just plugged it in I've just turned it on and I want to see if we can get the noise up on the bench so I'll take it out of standby All right, and there's the noise immediately good I don't know if you can hear that tick 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 that's the um, vibrato making a ticking noise so we've got that to sort out as well uh, but it's making a right racket at the moment now before I start getting involved with freezer and stuff let me just turn this down a bit what? I've got a switch I can turn my speaker into a, a quieter mode um, I just want to show you a kind of diagnostics trick which uh, you can use I'm going to pull the phase splitter valve that's the last valve in the preamp chain now if the noise goes away it will either be the face splitter valve or somewhere before that it won't be the power valve section I think we're pretty confident that that, that is the case anyway but let's just do it oh well, that's interesting okay well you, see, you never can tell what you'll find on an amp so I'll just turn the speaker into loud again and you can hear that, that noise is still there which is very surprising because in fact I don't quite understand now what's going on let me turn that to quieter again 
Uh, because if you remember, our tone controls affected uh, the sound of that noise. Let's see if that's still the case. Um, it was the treble particularly, so I'm going to turn the speaker up again. Yeah. Well, there's a horrible hum there which has come from nowhere. It might be the reverb actually, let me just... Um, yes, that's, that's the reverb not connected. Right, so turning the reverb down. I don't understand what's going on here. We've got a hideous racket there. I've got the face bit of valve in my hand here. I want to turn up the tone controls. If I turn the tone controls down, it goes. Yeah, see, it doesn't matter how much time you've got spending repairing amps, you can still scratch your head. Is this not the phase splitter? Is this something else? You know, is this maybe the it's almost always the last valve in the chain is the phase splitter? Hmm. Okay, well let's um let's pull let's pull the next valve along. In case of something weird. Oh, okay, right, so that one kills the noise stone dead. So we don't know what this last valve is. Could it be? It might be the tremolo. Um, we could perhaps prove that by putting this back in, putting both valves, valves back in, and if we hear that tick, 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 tick tremolo sound, then we pull this valve, <laughs> um, that will prove this last valve in the chain is the tremolo. I could, of course, go and look all this up, but it <laughs> takes a lot of time to do that. Right, so I'm going to turn off. That now makes more sense, doesn't it? You know, pulling this valve here and the noise goes. So let's turn it off. Pop these two valves back in. Upside down if I can do it. On. So those valves are back in, back on. Okay, then. <laughs> Interesting. Good vacillation, man. That was something to do with the tremolo. Oh dear, can you hear that horrible thump as I turn the tremolo speed up? You get that horrible thump. Okay, so now if I pull this last valve here and the tremolo stops, it does. Last valve in the chain, tremolo valve. Never seen that before. Last valve in the chain is always the face splitter. Okay, so. Forget about that tremolo for the moment, we don't need to worry about it. Now we know that pulling this valve here kills the signal, kills the noise. One of these valves will also be the um, uh, reverb, and I'm almost certain it's going to be this uh, 6v6 here, off to here. So I think that 6v6 is our, is our um, reverb. Okay, so... I'm going to pull the next valve in sequence now. Sorry, I'm not that one. We know that one does it. What, what about this one here? What does this do? Now that was interesting. Just uh, mute that racket again. I don't know if you heard that. When I pulled this one here, and by the way, the, sound, the noise hasn't gone, We've got a burst of noise. Now, does that mean that it's uh, it's not effect send and return, is it? That would be amazing if that was the case. You know the old dirty effect send and return jack there. Um, 
because it was right near to there. Let's just open these contacts on the effect send a return. Not so easy. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just get a jack plug and plug it in there. A dirty effect send a return jack can definitely cause this problem. No. It's not that. That's having no effect whatsoever. Okay. I'm just going to have a little tap around here though, because I was a bit suspicious about why just the jerky motion of pulling that valve out causes <laughs> burst of noise. Is it something? Something around here? Okay, did you hear that? Right, now, now we have to be very careful here. I just tapped that board there and the noise went away completely. So, we have to be very careful, I'll tell you why. Because we don't want this to go away, this noise. I don't want to be tapping that, the noise cures itself and that's it, I can never get it back. So we're in a situation now where it's probably something on this tag board here. A dry joint or something like that and um, just flexing the tag board causes it to come and go. I'm just going to have a little move of some of these components here. See if I can narrow it down. These things can be very, very tricky to find. I'm just gently moving leads and components. I'm just going to gently flex the board. No, that's not doing anything now. I'll turn this up full for the moment. Sorry about the racket. Flexing the board. Uh, so let me talk to you again. Was it a coincidence I just happened to go like that and at that moment, you know, the sound cut out? Because it's certainly not doing it now. Flexing that board, no effect. Well, let's, in for a penny, let's just take out this uh, second valve now. And uh, if that, if it goes, when we pull that out, it's either the second valve or the first one. Okay, so now I can... Right, now that hasn't cured it. Okay, so pulling the phase splitter uh, cures it, but anything before the phase splitter, I'm assuming that's the phase splitter, I'm not even totally sure about that, it has to be, it has to be, second one, second one in. Uh, so it seems to be coming from the phase splitter, but again that makes no sense because these tone controls affect it. Hmm. Uh, okay, so let's just try a little bit of freezer. It seems to be amenable to being thumped around. Let me just check something quickly. I think he said he changed all the valves, which is why, of course, I'm not changing valves. Um, yes, he tried a new set of valves, and that had no effect. Well, I think we probably need to confirm that, don't we? So why don't we change, when we pull this valve here, the, the noise goes. So we've got to try another valve in there, even though he says he's put one in. I mean, I believe them, so that's not a problem, but we just have to check for ourselves, don't we? Right, I don't expect this to work, but we'll turn on with a new valve in this position here, and it's still noisy. 
Right, so now I'm going to see where this valve is going. It seems to be in this area here. I'm just going to get some freezer spray and see if it's a noisy resistor. It, it's not uncommon for one of the anode resistors to go noisy. So it's this valve here. I'm following it up to this part of the circuit here, which seems to be all here. It's usually 100k. If I can find 100k, that's the one I'm going to squirt. There is one there. Nothing. I'll do a few more here. No. Okay. Blitz that whole area of freezer and just turn that up for you. No effect whatsoever. Okay, one thing I've confirmed is that this is the phase splitter valve. I've traced the wiring through. It goes to the standard 100k and 82k in the um, anodes of them, and I can see the capacitors going off to feed the grids of the power valve. So we have a phase splitter valve here, and it's the only valve we've got in, yeah, apart from this reverb 6v6. So um, it's something to do with this phase splitter circuit. Uh, and we've blitzed it with freezer. So one thing we can now do is to... You see, it's interesting. Why is... Why are these controls? These... Tone controls. See, I can turn that down to nothing, that noise. And that's before the phase splitter. So that's that stopped, damn. Oh, now it's come back again. What we don't want is this to cure itself. Well my guess is that this tone circuit is sitting just in front of the phase splitter and the noise has been generated somewhere in this tone circuit and just being passed on to the phase splitter. You see a noisy resistor, that freezer spray, spray would um, quieten it all down. Yeah. Right, well the thing I'm going to try doing now is grounding the the grids of uh, of this phase splitter, in other words the inputs to it, and see if that cures the noise. Okay, so I'm going to just ground the grids of each side of the phase splitter. Is this on full? No, let's put it on. Here's the first one, kills it. Here's the second one, kills it. Strange. So grounding either side of the input to the phase splitter kills the noise, implying that noise is coming in to the phase splitter from the tone control circuit. And that's interesting, I can see that this treble control here, the lead from it just goes straight to a capacitor, which goes straight into the uh, um, in, into the phase splitter input. I'm just going to check whether there's any DC on that, and if there's not any DC, I can carry on just doing this grounding technique. So here's the treble control here. There's a couple of volts. That's interesting, a couple of volts. I wonder if there should be any on there. 3.8 volts on there. I wouldn't have thought there should be any voltage on there. And indeed, that's connected via a capacitor to there. So there shouldn't be any DC on there. Yet there's four volts DC. 
and on the other side of that capacitor we've got uh, quite a bit <laughs> 410 volts bloody hell that's because the um, valve's out and that uh, is not drawing any current and so that would normally drop down through the anode resistor and make some more sensible 300 volts or something so but we've got as I say four volts on other side of that capacitor should be any voltage on there. I wonder if that capacitor there is um, leaky. Aha! Aha, aha! Now that, friends, I'm going to put it into not into louder. That's still quite loud, but I'm pretty sure that that went down a fair bit when I sprayed that capacitor with freezer. So is the culprit this capacitor, I wonder? Five volts on there, should be anything. So I'll get the heat gun out. Just warm up that capacitor. turn that off uh, down uh, that's actually stopped altogether now for some reason that noise I suspect it'll come back and uh, just to show you we are looking at that capacitor there that is the one that connects the output of the tone control circuit there's the 100k resistor that sits in the anode of the tone control valve which is removed at the moment Hence, that side's at 400 volts or something. This side goes off to the treble pot look. And, of course, that should be at zero volts because the, the capacitor should uh, um, you know, block the DC. However, it's at four or five volts. When I sprayed freezer on that capacitor, it uh, quietened it down. And when I hit it with a heat gun, it went mental. So my money is on that capacitor. Certainly the first thing I'm going to have a go at changing. And all the noise has gone completely now. I don't even know where the amp's working. But, uh, well, that no, won't be, of course, because the valves are out. But the noise has disappeared. So um, hitting, nuking that with a heat gun on you know, lowish heat has stopped that stone dead. Interesting that that's gone completely, that noise. Okay, this is interesting now. The noise is gone. I've got 400 volts on that side of the capacitor. I did have five on that side. Now I've got nothing. That's where the noise has gone. So that capacitor's either failed completely or it's kind of healed itself inside with that blast of heat I gave it. Either way, I'm feeling a little bit confident that if we change that cap, we might be out of trouble. So I'm just going to check that the, I've just turned it off, I'm just going to check that the DC has, uh, has bled away from various places. Okay, so we will now see if I can find out what value that is and change it. C7. Okay, I've replaced that capacitor with a uh, 3kV capacitor I had. It's only 500 volts rated normally and um, it's on you can hear the tick 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 no noise yet obviously we'll leave it a little while because the noise did only come after after it warmed up but I'm feeling quietly confident that problem one on this amp might be solved the most difficult problem the other thing I might do is uh, just for fun is to get the mega on this capacitor and uh, see if it's leaky at all. That might be fun. Oh yeah, I'm loving this. So I've got the capacitor hooked up to my mega. In case you don't know, a mega puts um, high voltage DC across something to test insulation. In this case, 500 volts. So when I press this button here, it'll put 500 volts on that capacitor. I've heated it up with a heat gun and look at that, that should be infinite. 
Can you see that? There, wandering around as well. That capacitor is leaking. Oh, I like the fact that we actually diagnosed it and we can see the capacitor leaking before our very eyes. Makes it all worthwhile. Allows me to get through another day. Great, look at that. Should be that, by the way. Should be infinite. Perfect. So that is a grip, as we used to say in the BBC. That's the capacitor there, the blue one I put in. Now we've still got this annoying reverb tick, uh, sorry, um, vibrato tick. You can hear that. So that's the next thing I'm going to have a look at. Just to preempt that, it can either be quite easy to fix the vibrato tick or right so and so. And there are really only two ways of doing it. One is lead dress. I found that if the the leads, if you move them around, you can sometimes get rid of the vibrato tick. And the other is, and I'm going to have to look this up, there's a small capacitor you can put across the um, vibrato circuit somewhere which uh, helps with that, with that ticking noise. But we'll try the lead dress first. So we've definitely gripped that problem, that noise problem. It was that uh, capacitor in the tone control circuit. And even with the tone control valve out, that capacitor was... Um, hit, well, what, what of course was happening, 400 volts on one side should be naught on the other, off to the treble control and off to the phase splitter. But of course, with that leaking, you know, you're getting 3 volts, 3.5, 4.2, 1.6, 3.0, you know, you're getting this kind of varying sort of noise leaking through the capacitor and hence being sent downstream to the phase inverter and then off to the power valve so that's great that's good news good oh okay well the bad news is that lead dress does not have any effect on that vibrato tick Quite often just moving these leads around can get rid of that completely annoying. Such a, a, a pain of a pain of a problem this vibrato tick. I've had it lots of fender twin reverbs and that sort of thing. Bad design really, don't you think? That it can do this. No. Okay, so I'm going to have to go away and uh, remind myself about that little capacitor modification that um, you can put on the circuit, which hopefully, you know, nothing guaranteed, will get rid of it. Because that's pretty unusable at the moment, isn't it? Listen to that. Terrible. No oh dear. It's awful. Right, just a quick update. Neither of the two known fixes for the vibrato ticking problem had any effect whatsoever. So the two known fixes are lead dress. Often moving the leads around reduces the ticking dramatically. It had no effect whatsoever on this amp. And there's a, another fix. You can put a 0 0.01 capacitor from the 10 meg from the 10 meg resistor that goes to the uh, roach here to ground and uh, that sometimes fixes it. It didn't in this case. I tried putting it from that side to ground and it did reduce the tick 50% but also killed all the high frequencies on the amp so that's no good. So at the moment we have no fix on this uh, well-known problem of uh, vibrato ticking on fenders like this. So I've asked the client what he wants to do and I'm waiting to hear from him. Okay, uh, the amp was back together. It took me best part of an hour to put the amp back together extremely tight fit along this line here. I had to put a polythene bag in there to have any hope whatsoever of getting it in and then ease the polythene bag out. Um, anyway, that took absolutely forever. It took a long time to get the chassis out too. In fact, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it when I first started this amp. It took the best part of an hour to get it out. So it's all back together. The new reverb pan is in and okay. It's um, a 
complicated amp in that everything here is to do with the reverb. I don't quite know what dwell means. This is obviously the mix between the wet and the dry signal. So dwell as you turn that up. Oh yes, it's sort of longer and edgier and nastier when you turn that down. Oh, nothing. <laughs> okay. So that's probably the reverb level and that's probably the, the ratio of wet to dry. Tone is what you'd expect, so much more trebly. That's a bit nicer. It's the same reverb power I took out, so uh, that's the one that's designed to go into it. So um, it sounds good. It's very loud. The volume's on virtually nothing. that isn't it? Turn that down. The, um, I did phone the customer and he said he wasn't bothered about the vibrato. Shame I couldn't cure that ticking but uh, anyway if you listen there it is. Works beautifully. It's got that horrible tick on it. Not livable with is it? As you turn it down so that the tick doesn't matter, you can't really hear the reverb, so shame that. There may be a fix one day, but um, I tried everything I knew on that. Nice sounding amp, real fender sound. Loud, we're only on three, and uh, yeah, you know, if you like that sort of sound, it's a lovely amp. So I'm not going to do a sort of face to the camera outro on this one. Uh, I think that will do you for that. Quite an interesting little project with um, you know chasing down that noise. Turned out to be that little capacitor. Uh, couldn't fix the vibrato tick. Put a new reverb pan in. Job done. Customers happy. I'm sure you'll be delighted. And I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks as ever for watching.